All right, welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling. Today's topic is real wage rates, or maybe it just should be the real wage rate, and aggregate supply. So we've been using this thing called a short-run aggregate supply curve. And we've been saying that it slopes upward. That is, as prices go up, output goes up. And that's as opposed to the monetary neutrality view, which is which <coughs> which we believe is true in the long run. That is, if if you change aggregate demand, you can move prices, the aggregate price level up and down the economy, but not change output. So, if we move aggregate demand up and down change output change prices but not output so why do we believe that changing prices changes output and there are a few stories for that <coughs> but the one that we typically tell in uh, in first year economics and some people carry it through even long beyond that is the following that um, the demand for labor depends on what are called unit labor costs. <coughs> so um, well unit labor costs relative to prices. Okay, <coughs> the unit labor cost is the, co the cost of producing one unit of output which is wages divided by output per labor and this is Q over L is productivity productivity so So higher productivity lowers, and I'll just abbreviate unit labor cost that way, higher wages raise unit labor cost. <coughs> All right. And if, if prices minus unit labor cost go up then labor demand and output go up so there if you're a business and your price is above your unit labor cost and it's getting high, higher relative unit labor cost your business is doing well and you want to increase your employment and output Conversely, if price minus labor cost goes down, then labor demand and output go down. Okay, so that's a lot of the story of supply. And then another key part of it is that when aggregate demand shifts, price moves quickly and the wage moves slowly and productivity <coughs> is determined separately so it's sort of given um, and so it doesn't move at all so the r result of that is whenever aggregate demand shifts price moves 
relative to unit labor costs because wages are going to move slowly. They're going to stay about where they were. Productivity is given, and so all the action is in prices relative to unit labor costs. <coughs> so another way of putting that is when price goes up, the real wage, that's wage relative to prices, goes down. And therefore, unit labor cost, uh, price minus unit labor cost goes up, and therefore, labor demand and output go up. So this story of, <coughs> of aggregate supply is a story where workers, in some sense, are temporarily fooled. The increase in demand raises prices, lowers real wage rates, and therefore uh, increases output. So the aggregate supply slopes up in the short run. because workers are temporarily fooled by price changes. Prices going up reduce real wages Prices going down increase real wages. And thus, um, and so that's where we get this upward sloping aggregate supply in the short run. But we think in the long run, nobody is fooled. So in the long run, as prices go up, wages go up, and you end up with uh, the same real wage. So that's why we have the, ver the aggregate supply curve vertical in the long run. Uh, so let's just draw that quickly, the vertical long run aggregate supply curve. And then we have the <coughs> short run aggregate supply curve. Okay, so uh, it's sort of dis distressing to think that this whole thing depends on workers being fooled. At least it's distressed some economists at some point in time. One thing that people have observed is um, you, know, you would expect uh, if you had a probability distribution, I don't know if you've ever seen the, a bell curve of prob probability, but you would expect let's say if in general wage changes are a wages are going up an average of two percent a year and then you'd have some industries where they're going up really high and some industries where they're going up at let's let's say this is zero and some industries where they're falling well what what people observe is that there's a discontinuity right at zero. So workers are really unwilling to take a pay cut. And so what you observe instead is something, uh, a very a discontinuous pattern where there's very few pay cuts. And so there's this gap in here. Well, let me undo that. Um, that uh, you just don't observe <coughs> a high probability of getting a pay cut. So there's just uh, this dot doesn't connect up here. Um, there's uh, there there are many more people taking wage changes to that are at zero or slightly greater than zero than there are uh, less than zero. So that's known as sticky nominal wages and that could be an explanation for why 
uh, there's an upward sloping aggregate supply curve. That is, whenever the adjustment that's needed is for wages to fall, it doesn't take place. But when it's um, <coughs> when it's re required that wages increase, then it's it is more likely to take place. And that would also give you that upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. So the thing to remember is that in the background real wages are going down as prices go up and that's why and that in turn is what's causing the a gap to open up between prices and unit labor costs and that in turn is what's causing labor demand to go up and output to go up so that's one sort of basic textbook explanation of aggregate supply, and I think I'll just leave it at that.